ever thought of cloning yourself or regenerating some of your organs? But being humans, we can't just divide into two to make an extra copy of ourselves or regenerate any of our parts. If we were some other type of organism, let's say a starfish or a cactus, then cloning or regenerating would have been possible. Starfish show a startling property of regeneration. They can simply regrow their lost limbs to the complete length. On the other hand, some cacti can clone themselves with the help of fragments which drop off their branches. The fragments can take root and develop into new genetically identical cacti. These regenerating and cloning strategies are both employed by mitosis that we've already seen in depth in the previous video. As we've studied, mitosis helps in asexual reproduction in certain organisms, like in the case of this cactus plant. But in contrast to this, humans, along with many other plants and animals, produce new individuals exclusively through a process called sexual reproduction. The complicated yet necessary process of sexual reproduction is the key to species propagation in higher animals. And how is the process made possible? All begins with a unique process of cell division. It's called meiosis. The other type of cell division in contrast to mitosis. And what exactly is meiosis about? Let's dive deeper to understand this beautiful concept in detail. Let's begin with the definition of meiosis first. Meiosis is an exceptional phenomenon which produces four daughter cells, each with half the number of chromosomes compared to the single parent cell. You heard me right. The process gives us four new cells, unlike in mitosis, that produces only two new cells. And what could be the reason for this? Why do we need four daughter cells and that too with half the number of chromosomes? Just think about it. Sexual reproduction involves both the parents or two cells, one from each parent to be precise. Now if there are two cells fusing, it's obvious that the number of chromosomes should be half in both the cells so that the fused cell will carry the normal chromosome number. Now let's take it the other way. We know that the human chromosome number is 46. So, if there are two human cells fusing to give us an embryo, then the newly fused cell will carry 46 plus 46, 92 chromosomes. This is simply not possible in nature. So, in order to maintain the chromosome number of species, it is necessary that the two fusing cells contain half, that is, 23 chromosomes in number. So in order to maintain the number of chromosomes in the zygote, the chromosome number in the fusing cells need to be halved. Also, the chances of fertilization increase with more number of cells. Hence, instead of two, making four cells is preferable in nature. This is the reason why meiosis gives us four daughter cells with half the number of chromosomes. Now since the process yields us cells with half the chromosome number, it's also called as reductional division. Now that we've got introduced to the process, let's glance at the definition once more, but this time with respect to the chromosome number. Meiosis is a process that gives rise to a haploid cell from the diploid one. Now you must be wondering, what is a haploid cell and a diploid cell? Well, haploid cell is the one that has a single set of chromosomes while diploid cell has two sets of chromosomes. That means a diploid cell has chromosomes in double doses, while a haploid cell has chromosomes in a single dose. So the cells in our body with 46 chromosomes are all diploid, while the reproductive cells are haploid with 23 chromosomes. Now tell me, which are these reproductive cells that we've been talking about so far? Cells with half the number of chromosomes? Let's find the answer in our next video.